Okay, so this is the telescope we're going to be looking at tonight in this gorgeous weather. It is the SV Bonnie 17mm refractor telescope. Okay, so first things first, I am not being paid to talk about this telescope. SV Bonnie got in touch with me and were kind enough to let me try this telescope out for free. This is the smallest model of their latest range and it can be purchased on their official website for as little as 317 great British pounds. As you can tell, it's a very small telescope, but don't let that deceive you, as much like a neutron star, it is quite dense. The telescope is extremely well made, excusing the spelling error on the front. It comes with a dovetail bar and tube rings attached already, making it super easy to mount your telescope immediately after unpackaging it. It also comes with a number of accessories such as a finder scope and some eyepieces. They have also sent alongside it a Canon EOS camera mount and tube converter. This makes it possible to use your DSLR camera for imaging. My first impressions were that this was a very neat telescope. If the images it takes are half as good as it looks and feels, then we are surely onto a winner. I did try and cut them some slack. I have tried my best to use the most reasonably priced and budget friendly accompanying equipment as possible. That is a Canon 550D I purchased used for 80 British pounds and a Skywatcher tracking mount I purchased brand new for 300 pounds. So when you bundle all of this together, your total cost for a very nice astrophotography setup is just under 700 pounds. There are of course extras you may wish to purchase alongside these because you're a smell, smelly? You're a fairly smart person. Top of your list would perhaps be a 10 pound shutter release cable so that you can take images without having to hold a glove in front of a telescope for the first three seconds of every long exposure to reduce the effect of the vibrations caused by you pressing the shutter button on the camera. Yeah, it, it was a long night. Okay, I think I finally got it set up and taken images. And the first star I've pointed at wasn't on purpose, but it happens to be the most left star in Orion's belt, which is where the Horsehead Nebula is located. Right now, I've managed to pick it up immediately, the Flame Nebula, which is fantastic. That's how you want to kick things off. You want to kick things off with the best objects. And if you hear rustling sound on the floor right now, by the way, that's my dog, Max. He's just taking a poo which will soon be frozen by the way, almost immediately. So I've put the glove in front of the telescope because the first second I press the camera shutter, it's gonna vibrate a little bit. And in the image itself, because it's a long exposure, it causes the stars to all shake a tiny bit. Hopefully that's been avoided. So I'm getting some good shots of the flame nebula. It is minus six degrees out here now. So I don't wanna spend all night imaging the same target. Um, you are gonna be able to get some fantastic images with this and with most of the things in astrophotography, the more time you put into it, the better it becomes. It's, it's not a case of take one image, perfect, done. Like the more images you stack on top of each other, the better the final product. Time is of the essence here though, because I'm starting to lose the feeling in my toes. And I do have a lot that I want to get through tonight. I'm shooting the Flame Nebula now. I'm going to go for the Orion Nebula straight after this. All right, I'm just gonna take one more image and then I'm gonna move on to a different target now. So I've done the Flame Nebula and I'm hoping Horsehead Nebula. I've done the Orion Nebula and now I'm gonna move on to, I'm gonna go for the Pleiades, just for simplicity. The Pleiades is just straight up there, which makes it a lot easier. And then if I have enough time and haven't frozen to death, I will try and rotate it that way and look for the Andromeda Galaxy. Glove in front of camera. Shut the button, press down on a 30 second exposure and taken away. So I think the entire Pleiades cluster fits in perfectly within this frame shot here, which is a testament to the actual focal length of this because it may be perfect for imaging this object. Normally it's a trade-off with a Pleiades. You normally see only a few of the stars at once because you're zoomed in so much, but we may be able to see all seven. It's not seven, there's, there's a lot more than seven. Oh wow, yes, there are a lot more than seven. Yeah, I mean, in that shot just there, there's at least a hundred stars. A hundred stars in that image. Uh, you could faintly make out the dust clouds in the Pleiades. So I'm gonna see if we can bring more of that detail out by taking more exposures and then later on stacking them in a freeware known as Deep Sky Stacker. So not adding any expense to the budget, you just need a bog standard laptop with fairly simple capabilities, it's nothing advanced, to take all these images, put them on top of each other, and create one masterpiece. Okay, yeah, so we might have to move our setup slightly um, in order to accommodate for the fact that we can't see the Andromeda Galaxy. It will literally be a case of just moving it 
about six foot that way to avoid the trees just there. So we've done all the cool stuff behind me just there. We've done Flame Nebula, Horsehead Nebula, Orion Nebula, and all the up there, the Pleiades. I don't know how well you can make it out right now, but that's the Orion Nebula, or the Constellation of Orion, sorry, just behind me over there. I am now going to adjust the setup here and point it up there towards the Andromeda Galaxy. You can use really helpful tools like Stellarium on your phone in order to pinpoint exactly where it is the object you're looking for. But as someone with 10 years of experience now, I'm just gonna eyeball it and hope for the best. That's not very scientific. Right, I'm gonna regret going on my knees. That's what he said. Because that's how it really gets you. It's how the cold really kills you is when you let it touch a part of your clothing that then sort of soaks or becomes a lot more temperature words yep cold's got to me now yeah so it turns out i actually had covid at this point and although i'm not an actual doctor i'd like to offer you some free medical advice and that is regardless of your current health situation try your best to avoid being outside in below freezing temperatures for more than five minutes let alone four hours and this is a big part of the reason as to why this video is being posted seven months late all right so i'm going in blind i'm going to be looking through the viewfinder just here Phew. Andromeda is a tricky one because it's not a star-like object. It is a sort of faint blurry patch of light, but it's not impossible to find. I just want to make sure this is in fact looking at the galaxy. And boy, oh boy, it is. That's nice. That's very nice. So, press the shutter. Remove the glove. Say hi to the dog. Hiya, bud. Hiya. You're nice and warm. Yeah. Good boy. Okay. And then hopefully this shot of Andromeda Galaxy looks really nice. And I only have to take one or two. Because if I take one or two shots, get them in the bag. Perfect. I can call it a night. Head inside. And then me and Max can watch some TV. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, that shot. One of the key features that you'll see on here is that we have a dual speed focuser. So most telescopes, sorry, all telescopes will have a focuser just like this, quite a big one, which allows you to make adjustments in terms of the focus. But then this golden dial on the end just here allows you to fine tune it, which allows you to very slowly adjust it and really get those pinpoint stars that make the astrophotography images that much more spectacular. And when it comes to imaging stuff like nebula, we want the picture to be as sharp as possible. And that golden dial there will allow us to do so. So it's very handy. Uh, you can see me moving around quite easily just here. And that is because it's fairly lightweight. I think it weighs about four kilograms, which means it is possible for it to go on a mount just like this one here. I've spent many nights in this exact garden where I've had a 10 inch Newtonian, which I had to take inside. And as you pick up the steel tube, it is very cold. It's very cold, it's quite heavy and it's not exactly nimble. You have to carry it like this and carefully walk like a penguin in order to uh, avoid falling over. Yeah, so overall, very impressed with this telescope and I'm gonna carry on monitoring SV Bonnie's products going forward because they are relatively new to the game. The main leading telescope companies, as far as I've been aware growing up, have always been Celestron, Mead and Skywatcher. So now we have someone new to the game that is bringing in very good products at a very good price. So. It's exciting looking forward to see what else they might bring to the game. Right, I think I'll about to do it. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was an Astronomical Review. <laughs>